Well, hello, hello again on another Sunday evening. I pray that you had a great day today. I pray that the Spirit of the Lord and the glory of the Lord is with you, the confidence, the faith of God is with you, because it's a wonderful time to be alive. It's a wonderful time to be on the earth, especially if you know the Lord Jesus Christ. Man, I tell you, let's not take it for granted, folks, that we can say that we belong to him and he belongs to us, because in the time in which we live, there is no substitute for knowing Jesus Christ as your Savior, Lord, your soon coming King, your teacher, Holy Spirit. Man, I'll tell you, it's a wonderful thing when you know the Lord, because he keeps us, he teaches us, and provides everything that we need. And we thank God for you tonight. So we're going to go right into our teaching for tonight. Thank the Lord for each one of you that are listening. My prayer is that you would, uh, if you haven't subscribed to our channel, subscribe to it, share it with somebody, you know, share it with your friends, share it with your Facebook friends or whoever you can share it with because our whole purpose is, folks, we want to get this message out. We want it to spread. That's why the Holy Spirit has kept us in, uh, in on, on media, on social media, doing YouTube because we're reaching more people. We're reaching people all over the earth with this method. So we, we thank the Lord for it and we thank God for the wisdom and knowledge and understanding of the Holy Spirit to teach us how to do this. You see, the Holy Spirit will teach you how to do anything that God wants you to do. Anything that you need to know, you can find it out from the Holy Spirit. So he gets the credit, he gets the glory, he gets the honor, and all goes to him in Jesus' name. So tonight, we're going to continue uh, with the gifts of the Spirit tonight. We're going to continue with the gift of prophecy. We, we, we started this one in our Bible study session on this past Thursday night, talking about prophecy as being the best gift. And we're going to continue with that because this is a very important area, very important gift because we have established the fact that prophecy is the best gift. Prophecy is the best or the greatest of the nine gifts of the Spirit. And we, we, we developed that what we're from the scriptures to show just why prophecy is the best gift. So tonight we're going to take prophecy just a little bit further and we're going to use for a subject tonight, understanding prophecy understanding prophecy because unless we get an understanding of the gift of prophecy and prophecy in general we will not function effectively in it you see but that's why we need teaching we need understanding we need training we need the holy spirit we need revelation man i tell you like never before i thank god for the spirit of wisdom and revelation which i pray for and i pray that you pray for the spirit of wisdom and revelation because we have to understand uh, some things now because prophecy is is hearing god God's word in an understandable manner. Prophecy is speaking for God in a language that can be understood. And you see, this is how this is how we teach. This is how we preach. And when we teach and preach for God with understanding, that's prophesy. Or, or that's prophesy. We're prophesying. Or that's prophecy. Amen. So let's pray and let's ask the Holy Spirit to lead us, guide us, and direct us in this teaching on understanding prophecy. Father, we thank you for each one that have tuned in tonight. We thank you for each one that have listened. Each one that will find this channel either uh, deliberately or just by 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 mistake or just just stumble over it, Father. Because I believe it's your divine purpose and your divine appointment for us tonight and we give you praise we give you all the honor we give you all the glory for what's accomplished take no glory for myself I, I can do nothing without you lord i depend on you holy spirit i trust you you are my teacher so holy spirit teach me that i may teach others teach teach us all god that we will go out and be your disciples and be your voice in the earth and you get the glory you get the praise we declare the anointing the fire of the holy spirit the revelation of god to be our portion tonight and God, that you'll be glorified in Jesus' name. Amen. So tonight, I want you to go back to the book of Joel tonight. Joel chapter 2. And we're going to use Joel 2, 28 and 30 for our foundation. Then we're going to look into a little bit more depth or further understanding of this area of prophecy. We're talking about understanding prophecy. And I believe tonight we'll share some things with you that my prayer that will help bring a better understanding on the subject of prophecy, the gift of prophecy, prophecy through the prophet's office that we need to understand because, because prophecy is the best gift. It's the greatest of all the nine gifts of the Spirit. Why? Number one, as I mentioned last week, it's, it, it, it's because it edifies the church. Prophecy builds the church. Jesus said in Matthew 16, 18, upon this rock, I'll build my church and the gates of heaven will not prevail against it. So then how is the church to be built? It's built through prophecy and the gift of prophecy. See, it's because it's the spoken word. It's the spoken word with understanding from the Holy Spirit that causes 
the church to be built. So he called you, he's called myself, he's called every believer to be builders of his church. See, he builds his church through us. So we have to have the understanding of what he wants to build and how he's going to build it. And, the, and the, one of the ways that he builds his church is through prophecy and the gift of prophecy. Also, prophecy also uh, edifies the church. Prophecy edifies the church. Like I said, edify, to, to edify means to build, it means to strengthen, and it means to cause to be more effective. Prophecy also exhorts the church. It encourages us, even when we're down, when we're, when, 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 when we're weary, when we're tired, when we want to give up. That word of exhortation, which is uh, uh, Bible prophecy or the gift of prophecy, it encourages us to keep going. Amen? And prophecy also comforts. Amen? It, it comforts, consoles us, restores joy, uh, gets rid of the grief, drives out the grief, but it's the spirit of prophecy. It, ex it edifies, exhorts, and comforts, charges us up, builds us up, prepares us to, to, to carry out the work of God and causes the church to be more effective. That's, that's, that's that These are just through the reasons why prophecy is the best gift. Prophecy is the best gift also is because prophecy could bring the, the, the loss of the unbeliever under conviction. It'll bring the person to repentance. You see, because when they can hear uh, to a prophetic word that certain sins are wrong, certain sin, sins that they're practicing in their life are not pleasing to God, it can bring them to repentance. And as he says in 1 Corinthians 14, 24 and 25, he said the hearts of people can be revealed, hearts of men can be revealed and they can come to a conviction, come under conviction and fall on their face before God. Amen. And worship God. That is fall, fall, fall down and pray and ask God to forgive them of their sins. Why? Because prophecy can reveal the hearts of men. In other words, the sins that are in a lot of people's life. And I know a lot of time they say, they, they, people tell me I do it and I don't even know nothing about what's going on in their lives, but that's prophecy. Prophecy helps, to, helps a person to know when he's off track, helps a person to know when he's going in the wrong direction. And you see, that is how prophecy can bring conviction and bring the lost to be saved and into the kingdom of God. That's why it's the best gift. Why? Because it, it's, it's, it's a weapon that will cause people to be saved. It's the prophetic word. It's that word fitly spoken, that word spoken in season. So now in, in, in Joel chapter 2, verse 28. Now Joel chapter 2 is the prophecy of the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. Peter preached Joel chapter 2 on the day of Pentecost. Peter preached exactly what Joel said here in chapter 2 in Acts chapter 2. Around verse 17 through 18, 17 through 19, Acts 2, 19. You see almost these same words. So what I want to emphasize, I want us to see tonight from, from Joel chapter 2 is the primary purpose for the outpouring. The primary purpose for this latter rain outpouring, here is in, it's in Joel 2.28. He says, And it shall come to pass afterward that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. And as I said, all flesh is, is, is who is going to experience this outpouring. The day of Pentecost, which was the first outpouring, it was just for the Jews. It was just on Jewish flesh. But this last day outpouring, it's going to hit the Jews, it's going to hit the Greeks, it's going to hit the Gentiles, it's going to hit the hit, hit the African Americans, it's going to hit the Latinos, it's going to hit the Caucasians, the Europeans, the, the rich, the poor, the, the, the homeless, the ones with the big mansion, it's going to be poured out on all flesh. Amen. Hallelujah. I'm talking about saved flesh. I'm talking about backslidden flesh. Going to come under conviction through this outpouring of the Holy Spirit. He says, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. And your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your young men's, your, your, your old men's will dream dreams. Your young men's will see visions. So he emphasizes the fact here that the purpose of this outpouring is so that the sons and daughters of God will prophesy. He didn't say that they, so that they will lay hands on the sick. And that's important. And that's a part of it. He didn't say so that, that they would, that they would, uh, uh, prosper uh, and, and have a lot of money. He didn't say, he said that your sons and daughters may prophesy. So the purpose of the outpouring is for us believers to prophesy. So we must get in a mindset, develop a mindset that we are here to prophesy. And prophecy is to speak for God in a language that's understood. It's speaking for God in an understandable language so people can understand, gain information, gain knowledge, so they'll know what to do. That's why prophecy is the best gift. Okay, he says that your sons and daughters shall prophesy, old men dream dreams, young men seeing visions. He said, on my servants and on my handmaid, in those days I will pour out my spirit. 
Then he says, I will show wonders in the heavens and in the earth, blood, fire, and vapor of pillars of smoke. So, okay, so after the sons and daughters prophesied is when the, is when the wonders and the signs and the miracles takes place. But prophecy has to be first. I said prophecy has to be first. So that also tells us why prophecy is the best gift. And it's the greatest gift of all. It's the greatest gift of the night. It's to prophesy. Why? Because how are we going to know the plan and the purpose of God if somebody don't tell us? Somebody must tell us in a language that we can understand. Speaking for God. And that's true Bible prophecy. So we see here that prophecy is for uh, the outpouring is for the purpose that we prophesy. So we've got to, we've got that. We we need to pray. We need. You haven't been prophesying. You have never prophesied or uh, uh, declared publicly uh, the, uh, the word of God or declared publicly. Uh, whether you preached or never preached or taught publicly or, or, or never gave anybody a word from the Lord, you need to ask the Lord, Father, I want to prophesy. Lord, show me how to prophesy. I want to speak for you. I want to build your kingdom. I want to strengthen the church. I want to edify the church. And I want to cause the church to be more effective. And it do, it's done through prophecy. So understanding prophecy is very important. Well, number one, we got to understand that it is the best and the greatest of the nine gifts of the spirit. Jesus came prophesying. Jesus, the whole teachings of Jesus, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, it was Jesus prophesying. That's how we know the plan of salvation. That's how we know about the Holy Spirit. It's because he prophesied. That's how we know about the fire of God, the gifts of the Spirit, the miracles, the signs, the wonders, and everything that Jesus taught. He did it through prophecy. He came prophesying. Amen. So he's called us to be like him. And God's going to be glorified. Okay. So now, now let's look at some of the things here concerning prophecies. Let's get a little better understanding of this subject of prophecy. Okay, let's look at the purpose of prophecy. Let's look at the purpose of prophecy. I want to go to Proverbs, Proverbs chapter 15. I came across a verse there in Proverbs 15, which was really interesting and really very enlightening. Hallelujah. To, to understand some things about prophecy. Proverbs chapter 15. Hallelujah. Thank God for the word. Thank God for the Holy Spirit. Thank God for you tonight that are taking time to hear this because it's going to make you to be more effective and you are going to begin to prophesy like you never did before. Hallelujah. The anointing is about to come upon you and you're going to begin to speak for God, to teach others, to preach to others and, and, and their lives are going to be changed and the kingdom of God is going to be advanced and the church are going to, is going to be built through what you and I do. And it comes through prophecy and prophesying uh, the word of God. Okay, Proverbs chapter 15. And I want to look at verse number 23. Proverbs 15, 23. It says here, A man hath joy by the answer of his mouth, and a word spoken in due season. How good it is. How good is it? Or how good it is. And there's an exclamation point here. And it says, it says, a word spoken in due season, how good is it? In other words, when we speak a word in due season, or when we speak a word that's in season, that's in the time in which we end, and that's what prophecy is. Prophecy is a word spoken in season. It's a word spoken in season. It's a word spoken in due season. In other words, it's, it's, it's a word for the times. So when we, when we hear a word for the times, a word for now, that's true Bible prophecy. And that's coming from God. He said, a word spoken in due season. How good is it? In other words, it's a wonderful thing to get a right now word. It's a wonderful thing to get a rhema word from God because you're hearing exactly what God wants us to know now. We need a now word. And prophecy brings us, true Bible prophecy brings us a now word. Thank God that we're receiving a now word from the Lord. Now, this now word or this word in season, it comes through the, through the channel of prayer. It comes through the channel of intercession. Spending time with God brings the word of the Lord to us. In other words, God reveals his word. He, re he reveals what he wants spoken. But it comes through prayer. You see, that's why I've been, the Holy Spirit has had me put an emphasis on prayer. These things we must know about prayer because prayer brings understanding. Prayer brings revelation. Prayer brings that prophetic word to us, what God wants us to speak. But we've got to be people of prayer. We've got to be his house of prayer because prayer brings to us from the Holy Spirit the word for the due season that we're in now. A word spoken in due season. Oh, how good it is. Amen. Why? Because that word spoken in due season 
we understand what God's plan, his purpose is for our life, we understand what to do because we get a word that's understood for the time in which we're in now. Hallelujah. And wow, that's a wonderful thing. Thank God for the Holy Ghost. Okay. So, so it's a word spoken in due season. He said, it's a wonderful thing for us. And, and uh, uh, those who are led and taught by the Holy Spirit possess the tongue of the learned. Now let's go to uh, uh, Isaiah chapter 50. Isaiah chapter 50. I came across a passage, man, that just, just, just wowed me. That's the best I can say. It just wowed me. Amen. Isaiah chapter 50. And let's look at uh, starting with verse number four. Uh, talking about understanding prophecy, and, and, and this has to do a lot with the understanding the purpose and, and how prophecy functions and the value of it. Amen. Hallelujah. We've got to we got to value prophecy if we got a desire to prophesy. Hallelujah. And God gets the glory for that. Hallelujah. I'm prophesying to you right now. Amen. Amen. Because you're getting a word in due season, and you're getting a word of understanding. You see, and that's why that's why tongues when 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 it's, when it operates through the gifts, when it operates through the gift of prophecy, must be interpreted. See, tongues, uh, tongues without interpretation does not build up, the, builds up, builds up the church. It does not build the church. It edifies us. But, but tongues, when it's interpreted, becomes prophecy. That's how the church is built. And you see, our desire should be to build the church of God. I love the church. I love because Jesus shed His blood. Jesus suffered for the church. So I want to see the church built. I want to see the church strong. And I'm not talking about some building, some structure, some brick and mortar structure. I'm talking about the people of God. We build the church by building God's people. And the sad part about it, most of our leaders, our church leaders, are not building God's people. They're building buildings. They're building bank accounts. They're building parking lots. They're building everything but, but the people of God. The only way you can build the church is to build God's people, Pastor. If you're not building God's people, you need to stop. Amen. And take an inventory of what you're doing and, and regroup and, and find out what it takes to build God's people. And to build God's people is to prophesy God's truth for the present time. Amen. We build the church by building the people. Okay. Isaiah chapter 50. You should have found it by now. Let's look at verse 4. Let, let's look at verse 4. He says, Isaiah 50 and verse 4. Talking about understanding prophecy. Oh, I thank the Lord for the Holy Ghost. I feel his presence here. He said, the Lord hath given me the tongue of the learned. This is verse 4. He has given me the tongue of the learned. Hallelujah. See, you need to ask for the tongue of the learned. Those who prophesy have the tongue of the learned. A amen. He's the Lord has given me the tongue of the learned, shall that that I should know how to speak a word in season to him that is weary. Like I told you, it's a word spoken in season. See, God has to give us the tongue of the learned. How do I get the tongue of the learned? Through prayer, through intercession, through praying in the spirit. To pray in tongues, to pray in the will of God, to talk into the Father, hallelujah, praying without ceasing, praying nonstop prayer, hallelujah, God will show you, he'll teach you by the Holy Ghost, but you got to be one who will pray without ceasing, hallelujah, you got to pray consistently, hallelujah, you got to be like Brother, Brother Wigglesworth say, I never pray more than 20 minutes at a time, but I never go more than 20 minutes without praying. Amen. I'm talking about praying all the time. Amen. You at Walmart, you can be praying in the spirit. I'm not talking about yelling out and getting attention and causing people to take you out of the store. No, you back there in Walmart in that checkout line. Always praying, always in prayer, always in this, always talking to God. That's how we get the tongue of the learn. That's how we get to know what to prophesy. It comes through prayer. He said, Thou has, the Lord has given me the tongue of the learned that I should know how to speak a word in season to him that is weary. You see, because prophecy is to lift those that are weary. Prophecy is to lift those that are about to quit, to lift those that are about to give up, to lift those that are in depression, to lift those that are in despair, to lift those that are worried, to lift those that are fear. That are, that are fearful. He said to speak, to speak a word in season to him that is weary. Folks, we got a lot of weary folks. I mean, this COVID and all this stuff that's going on now, it has wore a lot of people out. I mean, people are just weary. What we're talking about, they're tired. They want to give up. They want to quit. No, it's because they're weary because their spiritual life is out of order. Glory to God. When your spiritual life is in order, you don't get weary. Hallelujah. You're energized by the Spirit of the Lord. Why? Because the joy of the Lord is your strength. But prophecy, true Bible prophecy, will give us a word to speak to people who are weary. He said to, to speak a word in season. That's a current word because now a lot of people are weary. Now a lot of people need a prophetic word that's in season to lift them out of their despair, to lift them out of suicidal thoughts. 
Glory to God. My prayer tonight, I declare to you tonight that you shall not die, but you shall live and declare the works of the Lord. For the word of the Lord says to you tonight that you shall be strong in the Lord and the power of his might, because the spirit of fear and depression leaves you now. In the name of Jesus, just receive that word. Hallelujah. Glory to God. The joy of the Lord is your strength. Hallelujah. He sent his word to heal you and to deliver you from destruction. You will not die, but you will live and declare the works of the Lord. I'm speaking to somebody out there tonight. I'm speaking to several people tonight who are weary. Hallelujah. Let the word of the Lord energize you. Glory to God. This is due season. I come with a due season word for you tonight. That you will be victorious in that situation. Hallelujah. And God gets the glory for that. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Oh, glory to God. Hallelujah. And look at what he said. Isaiah 50 verse 4. Uh, the B part, the second part of verse 4 of Isaiah 50. He said, he awakeneth, he, he, he wakeneth morning by morning. He wakeneth my ear to hear as the learned. Verse 5, he says, the Lord hath opened mine ear, and I was not rebellious, neither turned away back. He said, now, 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 what, 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 what you see here? Something very important to hear. If we're going to prophesy, if we're going to speak the word of the Lord, he says, he, he wakeneth morning by morning. He wakeneth my ear as the ear of the learned. Okay, so if before we can prophesy, and we're going to prophesy according to the will and the word of God, our ears must be open because we prophesy that which we hear from the Holy Spirit. See, that's why we've got to have an ear to hear the voice of the Holy Spirit because what we prophesy is what we hear. I say what we prophesy is what we hear. What I prophesy is what I hear the Holy Spirit say. Amen. Hallelujah. He'll speak it. And I'll say it. In other words, yeah, that's why I say he has morning my way. He had a wake, he wakened my ear as the learn. Hallelujah. See, we need to ask God to waken our ear so we can be the learn. We can be the one who is equipped. We can be the one who is trained. We can we can we could be the ones who are prepared. Ask God to awaken your ear. Hallelujah. And I'm not talking about this naturally, I'm talking about the spiritual ear. Hallelujah. We have to ask God to open up our spiritual ears to the Holy Spirit. To the Spirit of God. Amen. You see, because the Spirit of God speaks into our spiritual ear. Don't you know you got five five natural senses? You got five spiritual senses. Hallelujah. You got sight, you got touch, you got taste, you got smell, and you got hearing. We got those same senses in the spirit. So we need to ask God to open our ears. Hallelujah. I, he said, He said, He said, He He hath opened my ear as the ear of the learned. Isaiah 50, verse 4. And verse 5, he says, The Lord has opened my ear, and I was not rebellious, neither turn away back. Neither turn away back. That's verse 5. He said, the Lord has opened my ear. Why did he open his ear? Because Isaiah asked him. You need to ask God to open your spiritual ear. Because prophecy comes through what we hear from the Spirit. If we can't hear from the Holy Ghost, we can't prophesy by the Holy Spirit. See, that's why we should not speak anything until we hear it from the Holy Ghost. See, because if we do it any other way than that, we're prophesying out of the human spirit, which is the flesh, or we're prophesying by an evil spirit, which is a, which is a demonic spirit, and we must prophesy by the Holy Spirit, but we must be able to hear God. We must be able to hear the voice of the Spirit. And I want you to know the voice of the Spirit. He's that still small voice that speaks to the inner man. He speaks through the conscience. He speaks to the heart, but we have to be able to hear. Our ears must be open before we can prophesy. We must, because what we prophesy is what we hear. What I prophesy is what I hear God say. Amen. What I teach is what I hear God say. Amen. And what he speaks to me is what I teach, is what I preach, what I prophesy. In other words, the revelation I get, I hear it. Glory to God. Glory. Thank God. God. He gave me an ear to hear. Glory to God. He gave me the ear of the learned. Why? Because I ask him, Lord, let me hear your voice. Let me know your voice. And, and, and I no longer say something told me. I said the Spirit of God told me. I said that. Why? Because I know his voice. You can't prophesy unless you can hear from God. you got to hear the voice of the Spirit. I can't emphasize this enough because understanding prophecy has, a, has this is very important to understanding prophecy. We've got to be able to hear his voice clearly before we can prophesy based on the word of God and prophesy accurately. You see, because the only way to prophesy is to first be able to hear the voice of God. We can't speak for God if we don't hear him first.
Glory to God. You got to hear him first. I said, we got to hear him first. And one of the best times to hear is in the morning. That's why he said here, Isaiah 50 verse 4, he said, he hung, he, he wakened in the morning. Um, he, he wakened in morning by morning. He wakened, he wakened in my ear as the hear, as the ear of the learned. So in the morning is when we need to spend time with God. Every morning. Every morning, you see, because in the morning you're fresh. In the morning you don't have the cares of the day ahead of you. You're fresh. You just woke out of sleep, and you get you get down on your knees and you go before God in prayer. That's the best time to get your ears open. Glory to God. He'll speak to you in the morning. That's why He says He says morning by morning He awakeneth my ear, and and and, and, and that's one of my, one of my favorite prayer times is in the morning. Glory to God. Never miss that morning. That morning watch. Amen. Why? Because that's when I'm clear. I'm rested. Glory to God. Hallelujah. You gotta pray when you're rested. Amen. Hallelujah. I don't try to pray. I used to try to pray when I'm tired and sleepy. That's a waste, man. If you're tired and sleepy, you might as well go on to sleep. Amen. Hallelujah. Because you, you're tired. Your flesh don't want. Your flesh is not going to stand up. A amen. And before you know it, you, 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 you're sleeping or you're distracted. You see, more in the morning is a very important time to pray. And, and that's why the Holy Spirit have us on Sunday morning when our in-person service in the morning. Glory to God. 9 a.m. on Sunday morning, we're in prayer. Why? Because it's the morning. Well, we can hear from him. It's the morning when his voice is more clear. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And one of the best times to pray is in the morning. And, 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 and the purpose of it, uh, of us praying effectively, is to uh, uh, is to hear his voice. Glory to God. You got to be able to hear his voice. You got to know his voice. God speaks through his word. He speaks through the Holy Spirit. Glory to God. He speaks through the, through the voice of the Spirit. He can speak in an audible voice, but he speaks to me mostly in that still small voice. Of the Holy Ghost through my conscience, through my inner man, it's like an inward knowing. Glory to God! Hallelujah! He just gives you a knowing. Glory to God! And that's the voice of the Spirit. So we got to hear first, Amen. And you see a lot of the reason a lot of people don't prophesy, a lot of people the reason a lot of people don't speak for God, they don't hear God, they don't hear the Holy Spirit. So how can you speak for the Holy Spirit, speak for God if you don't hear the Holy Ghost? Amen. So my prayer is that the voice of the Spirit be activated in us tonight on a, on a higher level that we'll hear the voice of God. And, and, and that's what Isaiah says here. And he says, I was not rebellious, neither turn I back. He said, because the Lord has opened, hath opened my ear. The Lord has opened my ear. Come on, you need to say that the Lord has opened my ear. Amen. I'm prophesying to you tonight. Prophesy over yourself and say, the Lord has opened my ear. Because the only way we can prophesy based on the word of God is to hear the spirit of God. And you see, the spirit of God is only going to tell us what's based on and in agreement with the word of God. That's why we've got to have the word in our heart. That's why we've got to eat this word. That's why we've got to consume this word. You see, because he calls us to read the word of God. He calls us to, to meditate on the word of God. He calls us to study the word of God, not just for us to know it, but for us to be able to speak it. Glory to God. You see, because he gives, he puts the word in us so we can prophesy it. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And when you start to prophesy, those scriptures are starting to come out, out of your spirit. They're starting to bubble up out of your belly. belly and you, begin, you find, yourself, find yourself prophesying for half an hour or an hour sometimes. Just declaring the word that's in you. The question is, how much word do you have in you? Glory to God. Hallelujah. You can see you got to give the Holy Ghost something to work with. Well, most, most of us don't have, have, have nothing in us for the Holy Ghost to work with. He works with and through his word that we put in. And then every prophecy, every time we prophesy, it's based on the word of God. But we have to first be able to hear. I said we first must be able to hear. Now, also in understanding prophecy, we've got to know also that prophecy works through tongues and interpretation. Prophecy works through tongues and interpretation. That's why, uh, that's why, that's why the gift of tongues is important and the interpretation of tongues is important and prophecy is is the highest level of the vocal gifts it's the highest level of the gifts in general but it's the highest level of the vocal gifts we have three vocal gifts there's tongues interpretation of tongues and prophecy prophecy is the highest level of those vocal gifts now i'm headed to acts chapter 19 and we're going to see an example of how prophecy works with tongues and interpretation acts chapter 19 that the, the disciples that Paul met the disciples who were disciples of John the Baptist. 
Hallelujah. Come on, tell the Lord, thank you for the truth tonight. Thank you for the revelation of the word. Hallelujah. Thank him for being able to get a better understanding of prophecy. Amen. Glory to God. Because, folks, this is the weapon. This is a weapon of our warfare that's not carnal, but mighty through God, and that pulls down strongholds, casts down imaginations, and every high thing that exalts itself against the word of God. It comes through the prophetic word of God, and it'll bring every thought to the obedience of Christ. We'll be ready to punish all disobedience when our obedience has been fulfilled. But our obedience must be to study the word of God. Our obedience must be to pray, stay in that secret place. Then the weapon of, 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 of prayer and prophecy and the word of God will work through us to destroy the works of the devil. Okay, Acts chapter 19. Let's look at how prophecy works through tongues and interpretation of tongues. Okay, verse 19, chapter 19, verse 1. And it came to pass that while Paul was at Corinth, while, while Apollos was at Corinth, Paul, having passed through the upper coast, came to Ephesus, finding certain disciples... He said unto them, have you, see, have you received the Holy Ghost since you believe? You see, you got to receive the Holy Ghost after you believe. Amen. The reason a lot of people don't have the Holy Ghost, they haven't received him since they believe. Amen. I'm talking to my Baptist brothers, my, my Methodist brothers, my Catholic sisters and brothers. You, after you believe, you got to receive the Holy Ghost. Now, you don't get the Holy Ghost until you truly believe. Amen. So if you can't get the Holy Ghost... Oh, you, you got to ask him for the Holy Spirit. If you can't get the Holy Ghost, you better go back and, and go back and, and seek God again on your believing. Amen. 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 You see, because the Holy Ghost is given to believers. He said, that's why Paul told, asked him, have you received the Holy Ghost since you believe? You see, he's talking about the baptism of the Holy Spirit here in fire. He's talking about the baptism of power of the power of the Holy Spirit, which every believer must experience because this is where the gifts begins. Amen. The utterance gift begins with tongues. Amen. The utterance gift begins with speaking in tongues. But it's the baptism of the Holy Spirit that Paul was asking them about. Because they were believers. But they have not. They hadn't received the Holy Ghost. Now I'll continue reading here. Uh, verse 2. He said unto them, Have you received the Holy Ghost since you believe? They said unto him, We have not so much heard whether there be any Holy Ghost. In other words, nobody has ever taught us. Nobody has ever told us. Don't you know this, this is, this is I would say, 85% of the church is right here. They're not being taught about concerning the Holy Spirit, the second experience of the baptism of the Holy Ghost and fire. They've been sitting in churches 35 and 40 years and nobody never told them about the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Amen. That's the, this was the condition of these disciples here. Amen. They were believers, but they had not experienced the Holy Spirit. They said, we never have heard whether so, rather there be any Holy Ghost. Paul said unto them, and then what were you baptized? They said, under John's baptism. Verse 4. Then said Paul, John barely baptized with the baptism of repentance, saying that the people that should believe on him, which is uh, w w the, the people that they should believe on him, which should come after him, that that is on Christ Jesus. And when they heard this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. And Paul laid his hands on them, and the Holy Ghost came on them, and they spake with tongues and prophesied. They spake with tongues and prophesied. In other words, Paul laid hands on them. He baptized them in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ as, as, Christ, as New Testament believers. Hallelujah. Amen. They believed on Jesus. They were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Paul, the Bible said Paul laid his hands on them. You see, the baptism of the Holy Ghost is imparted through the laying on of hands. The baptism of the Holy Ghost can also be imparted through the spoken word, and which is prophecy. See, I can prophesy, hallelujah, and people get filled with the Holy Ghost. But the laying on of hands is just one of the methods through which people are filled with the Holy Spirit. The Bible says, and the Bible says, uh, 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 when he laid his hands on them, they were filled with the Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost came upon them. Hallelujah. You see, because when you get saved, you get the Holy Ghost inside. But the baptism of the Holy Ghost is the coming upon. Have you experienced the coming upon? Okay. He said the Holy Spirit came on them and they spake with tongues and prophesied. So what's the first demonstration of the fullness of the Holy Spirit or the baptism of the Holy Spirit is speaking with tongues. In other words, that prayer language, tongues, they begin to talk to God in a heavenly language. They speak with tongues and they prophesy. They speak with tongues and prophesy. So let's know and understand that prophecy works with tongues and interpretation. They spoke with tongues and they prophesied. They begin to break it, cut a bomb, bro, so cody, undelemonasticated, but I, hold the body, undelemonasticated, but they, 
my children, I have set my spirit upon you today to fill you with my spirit and my power, and you shall prophesy. You shall declare my truth in this hour, for I have called you for such a time as this, says the Spirit of the Lord and the Lord of hosts. Hallelujah. Tongues came first. The tongues was interpreted, and the understanding language was the prophecy. You see, tongues, interpretation, and prophecy. Tongues, when it's interpreted, becomes prophecy. T prophecy works through tongues and interpretation. So, in order to prophesy and on many occasions, on most occasions, the Holy Spirit may give you tongues to speak in the congregation, to speak in the midst of the congregation. Then he will give you the interpretation of what you said in tongues. And that interpretation becomes prophecy. Tongues, when it's interpreted, is prophecy. And you see, folks, this is how what we got to understand. And this is how you will prophesy. This is how we prophesy. And the prophecy that we speak is based on the word that we have in us. God will never cause us to prophesy something that's contrary to the word of God. That's why we must have the word dwelling in us richly. We must read this word. We must, we must meditate this word. We must speak this word. We must live this word. We must love his word. And I'm talking about the written word. Hallelujah. Because the written word also is prophecy. Prophecy can be written. This Bible is a written prophecy from God. The Bible says, I believe it's Revelation 19.10, the spirit of Jesus Christ is the spirit of prophecy. Amen. This this word is a this, this word is a prophetic book. This word is a, a book of prophecy. It's it's a logos. Glory to God. And when we uh, when we speak the logos, it becomes rhema. It becomes that word spoken in season. Glory to God. And it brings deliverance, just as it brought deliverance to these disciples here in Acts chapter nineteen. Paul prophesied to them concerning their experience with God, and because he prophesied in a manner that they could understand. They were saved under the New Testament and filled with the Holy Spirit. And they began to speak with tongues and they prophesied. Tongues came forth, then prophecy came, which is the interpretation of the tongue. You see, because these things are very vital, very important to us in the time of Jerusalem that we understand prophecy. Now, let's go to 1 Corinthians 14 and let's look at judging prophecy a little bit. Let's look at what it takes to judge prophecy, you see, because when we prophesy, we must be willing to cause our prophecy to be judged. Amen? And you see, our prophecy is judged in two ways. It's judged either with the people around us saying, Amen, thanking the Lord for it. Because if God, if you prophesy and the people say, Amen, they thank the Lord for it, that means they give glory to God. Hallelujah. They magnify God because of the prophetic word. That means the prophecy was in order. That means the prophecy was based on the word of God. Amen. But if, if somebody comes up and says, well, I have to, I have an issue with what you said. I have an issue with that prophetic word, which, which is, which is what I've had to do on, on, on a few occasions. I've had to check a lot of people on what they were saying in the church. Amen. In other words, because they were prophesying out of order. Amen. And I had to tell one lady, you will not say that in here. I, amen. I had to shut her down. Amen. She called herself talking and saying what she want to say. And I said, I said, you will not say that in here. Uh, hallelujah. I have to stop her. Amen. Why? I judge what she said as being out of order. Amen. So, so, but, but if your prophecy is received, people glorify God. They say, thank you, Jesus. They magnify God. The spirit of God fall into place. That means your prophecy was accurate. It was in order and it was based on the word of God. Okay. First Corinthians 14. Let's look at verse number 29. First Corinthians 14, 29. Look a little bit about judging prophecy. What, what did Paul say here? He says, at verse 29, he said, let the prophet speak two or three and let the others judge. This is verse 29 of 1 Corinthians 14. And let the others judge. Uh, what do you mean judge? In other words, let the others determine whether or not the prophetic word was accurate based on the word of God or in agreement with the word. Amen. And we don't have to say, well, that's good. That's in agreement. I agree with that. All you got to say is amen. Thank you, Jesus. Give glory to God. That's the, that's the sign that the prophecy was accepted and the prophecy was in accord and in agreement with the word of God. As, as the people magnify God after you prophesy, that means that prophecy was, what, what, that prophecy hit bullseye. It was based in the word of God. He said, uh, 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 let, 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 it be by, let it be by two or by three, let the others judge. And if anything be revealed to another that sitteth by, let him first hold. Let him first hold his peace. 
For ye all may prophesy one by one, that all may learn, and all may be comforted. And he says, the spirit of the prophets are subject to the prophets. And he says, God is not the author of confusion, but of peace, as in all churches of the saints. And, and, and he emphasizes it here. He emphasizes it here. He, he, he says, he said, let the prophet speak by two or three. In other words, at a service, he said, two, three at the most should, should prophesy or come forth with a message for the church who is operating in the gift of prophecy or have a prophetic word. He said, by two or three. And he says, one by one, not everybody speaking the same time. That's what he's talking about. That's what he says here, because you see, that's confusion. Verse 31, he says, you all may prophesy one by one that all may learn. In other words, you wait. We wait until somebody else is done. We wait until somebody else is finished speaking. Then we come forth with our prophetic word. He says that the spirit of the prophets are subject to the prophets. In other words, the spirits of other prophets other, the spirit of the prophet are subject to the prophets. In other words, the, the spirit of the prophet who is prophesying is, sub, is subject to the prophets who are listening. In other words, you're under the authority of those that are listening. The, the spirit of the prophets are subject to the prophets. The, the spirit of the one who is prophesying is, is, is governed by the prophets who are listening. In other words, the prophets who are listening has the right to judge that prophecy or what you spoke. Amen. So we've got to know this. We've got to be willing to allow our prophecy to be judged. And, 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 and don't get don't don't be afraid to prophesy that you your prophecy might be judged as being an error. Hey, man. Hey, look, who haven't made a mistake? Who have who haven't missed it? Amen. If you haven't missed it, you must be Jesus Christ. Amen. It ain't none of us Jesus. Amen. We all missed it. We all sinned and come short of the glory of God. So don't, so don't be so fearful of making a mistake that you are you are hindered from coming forth and speaking. Amen. You got to step out the boat. I say you got to step out the boat. You got to let the Lord use you. And, and this is all a part of learning and all a part of growing. And, and he says, uh, God is not the author of confusion, but the author of peace. And I drop down to verse 40. He said, let all things be done decently and in order. Let all things be done decently and in order. Now, let's go back up. I just saw verse 34 there. I got to hit verse 34 before I'm done here tonight. But he, and look at what he says here. Uh, he says, talk, still talking about prophecy here understanding prophecy he said let your women keep silent in the churches for it is not permitted for them to speak but they are to be, uh, they are commanded to be under obedience as also saith the law if they are, will learn anything let them ask their husbands at home for it is a shame for a woman to speak for a woman to speak in the church okay now to clarify that paul was not saying and the meaning here is not that women are not ever to speak in the church. He couldn't mean that because if he did, it would be a contradiction of scripture. Because in Joel chapter two, the, the prophecy said, the sons and daughters will prophesy. Young men, old men dream, dream dreams, young men see visions. So if, if Paul meant that women were not to speak at all in the church, that would contradict Joel chapter 2, it will contradict Acts chapter 2, verse 17 through 19, because both of those passages, Joel and Acts, Peter preaching on the day on the day of Pentecost, both of them say the sons and daughters shall prophesy. So where are they going to prophesy at? They're going to prophesy in the church, they're going to prophesy wherever they are given a word from the Lord. Well, what did Paul mean here? What was he, what was the focus here? Paul was focusing in on the fact that the Corinthian church, this whole passage on the gifts of the Spirit, 1 Corinthians 14, was for the purpose that the Corinthian church were abusing the gifts, they were out of order, they were they were, they were, they were, they were, they were, they were misusing the gifts, uh, and, and the women were out of order, the women were were, were, were were taking authority, the women were taking over where they shouldn't, and, and that's why Paul had to address this for, for the Corinthian church and all the other churches that were out of order concerning the gifts of the Spirit. Now, I believe women should be allowed to preach. Amen. I believe there are female apostles. God is raising up female apostles. I believe he's raising up female teachers, uh, female prophets. Amen. Hallelujah. And they must be allowed to speak in the church. Hallelujah. I'm a big promoter of women's ministry. 
Amen. Glory to God. You see, I always said like this, the Holy Spirit showed me. He said, the devil used the woman in Genesis. He said, but I'm going to use her in the end. He said, the devil used the woman in the beginning, but I'm going to use her in the end for my glory. And she's going to, she's going to speak according to my purpose. And she's not going to obey the devil. Now, what Paul was addressing here, what I believe was the spirit of Jezebel. In other words, the spirit of Jezebel is the woman who wants to rule, the woman who wants to take charge, the woman who wants to take over. It's, it's it, it, a woman like that should not be allowed to speak in the church. And I believe that's what Paul was dealing with here. He was dealing with the unruliness. He was dealing with the out of order in the Corinthian church. And we must not take that verse, verse 34, and blanket the whole church and say women are not allowed to speak. You see, because God's going to use women in a mighty way. And we've got to know that Paul was addressing the condition of confusion and being out of order. A lot of the women in this church was out of order. And in any church, I don't care what church it is, if the women are out of order, they should not be allowed to speak. If the women are bringing confusion, they should not be allowed to speak. If the women are bringing division in the church, they should not be allowed to speak. And it would be a shame for that type of woman to speak in any church. Glory to God. But it does. We don't blanket the whole church with this. We don't blanket every woman that a woman can't preach and a woman can't, can't, can't speak the word of the Lord. Amen. This is what Paul was dealing with. He was dealing with the issue in the church at Corinth. Glory to God. I, 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 you see, because I've had to deal with unruly women in the church. Amen. I've had to shut a woman down one time. She got up in there, called herself prophesying, declaring something all over the ministry. And I, I had to stand up and I said, you will not say that in here. I said, you, 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 you sit down and be quiet. I'm not allowing you to say that in here. Boy, she got mad as she could want to be. She got mad as she wanted me. And I, 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 I had to stop her. Amen. Why? Because she was out of order, unruly. Amen. And, and I mean, I've had to deal with it. I had to deal with it. And I don't know she had that, 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 one, that one woman, like, like about two or three others, I had to just put out the church. I had to excommunicate them because they were causing confusion. Leaders, we cannot let people destroy the work of God. With, with their attitude, because with, their, with that evil spirit in them, we have to stop them. Amen. Hallelujah. You see, because uh, Jehu stopped Jezebel. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Je Jezebel, Jezebel got, 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 she was over her husband. Amen. She ruled over Ahab. But when she came to Jehu, that Jehu anointing put an end to Jezebel. And this apostolic anointing is a Jehu anointing. And Jezebel will not, Jezebel will not rule in the church. Amen. Not where the apostolic anointing is, amen. So, so I had to deal with it, and I had to, had to, had to, had to really uh, put my foot down with some women, amen. But, the, but the, the, the majority of women that I've, 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 I've been able to lead have been very humble, very submissive, uh, very committed to the Lord, and they were, they stayed in their place. Glory to God. And when a woman stays in her place, she should be allowed. When a woman stays in order, she should be allowed to speak in the church. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Because if, if we shut it down, we shut all women down, we would be contradicting the scripture. He said, sons and daughters shall prophesy. He said, I'll pour up my spirit on my servants and my handmaids. Amen. In other words, God's saying, I'm going to raise up some women and I'm going to use them for my glory. But but we got to we got to understand that women can prophesy, but they must be in order. Amen. Hallelujah. And, and he said in verse 40, let all things be done decently and in order. And God gets the glory for that. Okay. All right. Uh, let, let's take this a little bit further. And I'll be done tonight. The, the, how prophecy operates in the midst of a crisis. We got to understand that uh, many times God will send a prophetic word when we're going through a crisis. Amen. Hallelujah. We're in, a, we're in a time of crisis, folks. And we need the prophetic word of God. We need prophecy to come for us like never before. Okay. Second Chronicles 20. Second Chronicles chapter 20. Let's look at this. Let's look at, we. Uh, many of us know the story. If you're not, I'm not going to read it from verse 1. I'm going to pick it up at verse 14. But the story is where Jehoshaphat was being attacked. Jehoshaphat and the people of Judah was being attacked by three armies. In other words, he was outnumbered and, and, and he was under siege. Je Judah was under siege. Jehoshaphat, their lives were in danger. And what Jehoshaphat did, Jehoshaphat called a fast. And he, and, and he called a prayer gathering. He called all Judah together to pray. You see, because that's what you do when, when a crisis is. We call a prayer gathering. We call a corporate prayer meeting. Amen. And Jehoshaphat called a fast and he called a prayer gathering. And he prayed uh, from verse around verse 5, around verse 5, right on through verse 13. And, and, and then after he prayed, you see, that's why prayer is so important, folks. 
because prayer brought forth a prophetic word in the midst of a crisis. You see, because this prophetic word that we're about to look at, it encouraged, it edified, it exhorted, and it comforted the people of God, and it declared what God was about to do for Jehoshaphat and the people of Judah. It was the prophet Jehaziel who stood up and began to speak. And folks, we need some Jehaziel to rise up in the midst of these crises. We need some Jehaziel to open their mouth and speak, thus saith the Lord, in the midst of this coronavirus, in the midst of all this racism and danger and violence and all this. Where are the Jehaziels? Glory to God. Hallelujah. Let's see what Jehaziel had to say. After they prayed and they fasted. The Bible says in verse 14, Then upon Jehaziel, the son of Zechariah, the son of Benaiah, the son of Jeel, the son of Metaniah, the Levite of the sons of Asaph, came the Spirit of the Lord in the midst of the congregation. In other words, the, the Holy Ghost, Hallelujah, the Spirit of prophecy fell on Jehaziel. Hallelujah. And, and you see, Jehaziel was one of the prophets. He says, in the midst of the congregation. And he said, and he said, now he's speaking in a language that's understood. So that the people can understand. In other words, he's prophesying. And the prophecy, we see the results of his prophecy. And, and the Bible says, said, verse 15, And he said, Hearken ye all Judah, and ye inhabitants of Jerusalem, and you too, King Jehoshaphat. Thus saith the Lord unto you, he said, Be not afraid. Glory to God. Hallelujah. That's comforting. He said, Don't be afraid. Be not afraid, nor dismayed by the reason of this great multitude. For the battle is not yours, but God's. Boy, I'm telling you, that's a word of exhortation, edification, and comfort. He said, the battle is not yours, but God's. I'm here to tell you tonight, the battle is not ours, folks. It's the Lord's. Hallelujah. I said, the battle is the Lord's. He said, the battle is not yours, but God. He said, tomorrow, go ye down against them. Behold, they come up by the cliff of Ziz. Ye shall find them at the end of the brook before the wilderness of Jeriel. Jeriel. Okay, so here we see a word of knowledge, a word of knowledge through the prophet, you see, because he has a revelation gifts, which tells them what to do. Like I told you about that word of wisdom, that word of wisdom, this is a word of wisdom because it tells them what to do. Knowledge is information, word of wisdom is, is, is how to use the knowledge. So he tells them what to do. He told them tomorrow, go down against them. Behold, they come up by the cliff of Ziz. You shall find them at the end of the book before the wilderness of Jerel. Okay, so he gives them a word of wisdom and a word of knowledge. The word of wisdom tells them what to do and when to do it. He said, tomorrow go to this particular place. And the word of knowledge is, they're going to be there. You'll have knowledge that they're there. He said in verse 17, you shall not need to fight in this battle. Set yourselves, stand ye still, and see the salvation of the Lord. With, with you, O Judah and, and Jerusalem, fear not, be not dismayed. Tomorrow go out against them, for the Lord will be with you. He said, go out against them, for the Lord will be with you. I'm here to tell you today, folks, we can go out against anything that's against us. He said, because the Lord will be with us. I prophesy over you tonight that the Lord will be with you. But just go out. In other words, don't hide. Don't hold back. Don't, don't, don't shelter yourself in. Don't, don't, don't fear the enemy. He said, but go out and face it. He said, because the Lord will be with you. Go out and face it. Go out and face it hell on because the Lord is with you. I'm prophesying to you tonight. I don't know who this is for. You're facing something that you're timid, you're shy, you're, 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 you're intimidated by it. The Lord said, go out and against it. Go out against it. Go out and face it head on. Hallelujah. Why? Because the Lord will be with you. I said, the Lord will be with you. I said, the Lord will be with you. And if God is with you, who can be against you? Glory to God. He said, the Lord will be with you. The Bible says in verse 18, John Hasabat bowed his head and his face to the ground. All Judah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem fell before the Lord and worshiped the Lord. Glory to God. In other words, they, they glorified God. They magnified God. Why? Because he prophesied based on God's promises. God said he'll never leave us nor forsake us. God said he'll give us victory even in the midst of a trial, even in the midst of a crisis. God said, I am the Lord that healeth thee. He said, I am your Jehovah Jireh. He prophesied based on the word of God. The people magnified God. The people bowed and worshiped. Why? Because he, he heard. See, Jehaziel had to hear from God first before he could prophesy. And, and, and the Bible says here, victory came became, became theirs. Okay? I, I, I drop down to verse 21 where we see the victory here. He said, and when they had consulted with the people, 
he appointed singers unto the Lord that they should praise the Lord in the beauty of holiness. And they went out before the army. Who did? The singers. The singers. The singers went out before the army. And this is the instruction that Jehoshaphat gives to Judah after Jehaziel prophesied to him and the people of Judah. He said, uh, uh, as they went out before the army, they began to say, praise the Lord for his mercy and do it forever. Man, that was the song. Praise the Lord for his mercy and do it forever. For the Lord is good and his mercy and do it forever. Man, that's a song of victory. That's a battle song. That's a warfare song. Amen. That's the song they sang. Okay. And, and as they began to sing and to praise the Lord, the Lord set ambushments against the children of Ammon, Moab, and Mount Seir, which were come out against Judah, and they were smitten. And the children of Ammon and Moab stood against the inhabitants of Mount Seir, utterly to slay and to destroy them. And they made an end of the inhabitants of Seir, and everyone helped to destroy one another. In other words, that prophetic word gave them the, the strength, the courage, the backbone for those singers to go out in front of the army because they, they knew that the battle was not theirs, but it was God. They knew that the Lord will be with them, but they had to go out. Hallelujah. They had to go down to the battle. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We're going down to the battle, folks, and because the Lord is with us. I said the Lord is with us. And, and the Bible says that the angel of the Lord, you see, God set ambushments. The angel ambushed the enemy. Glory to God. Why? Because they had a prophetic word that encouraged them, that edified them, that strengthened them, that encouraged them to go out anyway and put the singers out front. Not the soldiers, but the singers. You see, because you see, God used, used the foolish things to destroy the enemy. He used the foolish things to combine the wise and he used the singers. And, and God worked a miracle that produced victory, but it took a prophet to prophesy in the midst of a crisis. Oh Lord, raise up your Jehaziels in this hour. Raise up these Jehaziels and let them prophesy and encourage your people that we can go out because the Lord is with us and the battle is the Lord's. And the angels of the Lord will ambush our enemies through the prophetic word, through the prophetic word of the prophets that will be raised up in this hour. Not only they got victory, they got wealth more than they could carry away. He says, and when Judah, verse 24, when Judah uh, came to the watchtower of the wilderness, they looked unto the multitude, and behold, the dead bodies were fallen to the earth. Not one escaped. And when Jehoshaphat and the people came to take away the spoil, they found among, the, among them in abundance riches with the dead bodies, precious jewels, which they stripped off of them more than they could carry away. And there were three days gathering in the spoil. It was so much. But it all goes back to the fasting, the prayer, and the prophetic word to the prophet Jehaziel that caused God to release angels. You see, a prophetic word will bring angels from heaven. Prophetic words will bring angelic ambushments against our enemies. And God used Jehaziel's prophecy as the sword of the spirit that brought deliverance to Jehoshaphat and the people of Judah. And not only that, brought wealth and abundance into them. Why? Because prophecy works in the midst of a crisis. Oh, Lord, raise up some Jehaziels in this hour because, folks, we are in a crisis time. And this is a word for this season that the word of prophecy, the prophetic word, fitly spoken, God will release angelic armies to fight for his people and deliver us like never before. Where are the prophets? Let the prophets arise in this hour. Let the, let, let the believers prophesy and declare the truth of God. And God will use that word as the sword of the spirit. And, and my prayer is this, this will help us to better understand the function and the operation of prophecy and the gift of prophecy in Jesus name. Hallelujah. Let's pray. Father, I thank you right now for each one that have heard this tonight. My prayer is that we get a better understanding of the gift of prophecy and prophecy through the prophet's office. Father, I pray that this activates the spirit of prophecy to come upon us like never before, just like it came upon Jehaziel. Oh God, you be glorified. Let us speak the prophetic word. Let us prophesy according to your plan and according to your purpose. God, that deliverance will come, that the activation of power gifts will be activated through the spoken word. And Father, help us to pray. Help us to stay in the secret place. And I pray tonight for the activation of the spirit of prophecy. So for those that will hear, have heard this tonight, and those who will hear it in the days to come. That you be glorified 
In Jesus' name, amen. Glory be to God. Thank God for the word of God tonight. Thank God for your time. Like I always say, when you spend time with the word, it's never time wasted because God is preparing us for an awesome move of the Holy Spirit and he's letting us know that it's the prophetic word, it's prophecy through which he will teach us, give us revelation, train us, equip us, and even release angels on our behalf in the midst of a crisis. Hallelujah. May the Lord bless you tonight. I hope you got something out of this. If you don't know Jesus Christ, you receive him tonight as your Lord and Savior. Ask him to forgive you of your sins and, and, and ask him to fill you with the Holy Spirit. But let's press in, folks. Let's press in to prophesy. Let's desire to prophesy. And I believe that God's going to raise up the Jehaziels. And many will begin to prophesy through tongues and interpretation. And God's going to be glorified. In Jesus' name. Until the next video, got some more good information to come. I'm going to teach some more on tongues and interpretation. And God's going to be glorified. God bless you. Thank you for listening tonight. Like the channel uh, and, and share it with somebody because we want th this information to get out to as many as possible. And God's going to be glorified because he's raising up a prophetic army that's going to prophesy, declare his word, and he's going to show up like we've never seen before. May the Lord bless you tonight. Have a great rest of the night. In Jesus' name, we love you.